Here we are. Everybody's busily working. Mr. Heitman over there. Oh, look at him. He's like chairman That's of the board. How can I service you today? <laughs> How can he service me today? I don't even want to speculate. And there is Ernest Ever T. Heard? Ernest T. Sarah? Yeah. There he is, folks. Mr. Ernest T. himself. <laughs> yes, sir. -y. The company idiot right over there. <laughs> just kidding, Chris. I'm just kidding. Oh, no. I thought you were serious, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was serious? Oh, look at that. He's combining water Ouch. and saliva. Water and saliva. Not a good deal. Bad move on his part. He's going to die. Look, the beautiful view, folks. Snowing outside. It is snowing. Yes, sir, yeah. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? That's great. Okay. Is it There's Mr. Brad himself, the big dog of the firm. Oh, there he waves. Oh. Here comes one of the principals, Mr. Nick Betzel. Mr. Principal. Mr. Principal. I used to get in trouble with the principal all the time. Those are, uh, yeah. 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 Of students or something. <laughs> A little bit of our operations room. Kurt. Bill Pollock, please. Nick Betzel. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kurt. Bill Pollock, please. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, the, what? Uh, Hello, Bill Pollock, please. Pediatrics on the phone, please. Thank you. Okay. Right. <laughs> Mark, let Jimmy take over, Mark. He's retiring soon. Well, anyway, Jimmy came by the next day. Mark's clumsy. He's one of my girlfriends. He's still very long. I'd like something. Don't take over his job. He's retiring. He's like, super going ahead. Okay. Do we have everybody here? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Does anybody uh, miss you? No. No. Yes. Jimmy. Hey. Well, I'm going to welcome everybody here formally to our first. I'm going to welcome everybody formally to our first Christmas party. Come on the way. For Betsy, we're the news bomb. And uh, <laughs> we're going to kind of try to struggle through this. This is, to me, this is a very, very important uh, event. Uh, when we get together casually to talk about what we do, to celebrate a very important occasion like Christmas, uh, this is very, very important. Unfortunately, you know, it's the tyranny of the urgent. And so many things demand our attention. And you know, some of us were in the office till just less than a couple hours ago, dealing with customers, all of the rush and everything. So we're going to struggle through this first one together. Uh, but I'll tell you that one of the things that, uh, that I think is important about Christmas, I I'm going to read from our mission statement. It says, the greatest among you should be like the student and the one who leads like a servant. That's our, the first verse from our mission statement. And I think at Christmas time, some of you remember last year at Clayton Brown, we talked about how in sales we try to do the unexpected. We try to do something that is completely unexpected to break the script of our customers. When we're trying to help them and they think we're trying to sell them, we'll do something completely unexpected to, to break, to trip them up. And then they have to go, whoa, 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 what, now what is going on here? Instead of just saying, oh, it's a salesman. As soon as they say, oh, it's a salesman, we've lost. And we talked about last year just the fact that in the fullness of time at Christmas time when the whole Judeo world believed that uh, God was going to send a king instead of sending the king he sent a little baby 
and a little baby who was poor. And it was totally the unexpected thing to do. And, uh, and by doing that, I think he really gave us, in some cases, a model for, uh, for the ultimate in communication and some of the things that we do. I, uh, I think there's another thing that we've talked about in the last year. We've talked about, uh, we have two primary values in our company. The first one is serving. And the second one is being learners, learning. And uh, in the season of Christmas, we don't celebrate a God who, send, who sent somebody down to earth to say, I am the king, I know it all. He sent somebody to live among us, to be like us. And, it's, and again, I mean, we teach with parables. We teach with a lot of things. We are not, quote, unquote, a Christian company where we only hire people if they are Christian. That's not the point of this conversation. Nevertheless, a lot of the truths that we base our business upon are embodied in the Christmas message. The fact that somebody who was all-knowing came down to earth and humbled himself to be among us at, at Christmas time is, is one of the most amazing, incredible things in all of history. And so when we talk about dealing with our customers as we do, not trying to lord it over them that we know more than they do about bonds, but try to get up next to them and say, look, let's learn together. Uh, it's not because we thought of that ourselves. It's not because that's a first time thought somewhere out there in the, in the universe. It's because it works because it, it's, it's the right way to do things. If you're gonna help somebody, you don't lord it over them, you get up next to them. And thank goodness that we have uh, a God who did that for us in the Christmas season. So uh, this is our first Christmas party, and uh, we're going to try to do something. You know, it's it, I've worked for companies throughout my life, and every time I worked for a company, there was always there were always things that I said, "Gee, boy, it really hurts when they do this. It really hurts when they do that." And I'm sure there are things in everybody's experience here where you're thinking, "Man." Betzel guy, man, it hurts when he does this. Like, get going, Betzel, you keep, you're, you're, you're droning on and on. But one of the things that, that I always found missing was a sense of appreciation for what people do. And for the rest of the night, we're going to do something I think is pretty radical. We're going to spend it talking about you. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go around, and I'd like Rich, come on up here and join me, and Phil, come on up here and join me. And we're going to stumble through this, and this is our first shot at this. So forgive us. So forgive us. Yeah. We, speak, we speak about bonds a whole lot more intelligently. That's right. We than we people. do about people. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of try to go kind of from table to table. And, and for those of you that are newer with us, we're going to introduce you to some of the men that work with us and some of the beautiful wives and uh, lovely people that, that support them. And uh, we have some, we call this an award ceremony, and you'll find out what this is. <coughs> Let's, let's work this way and kind of go around the room. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. We'll let you All right. And we'll just uh, follow along. Mm -hmm. I think we'll just start right here with uh, with Brad Hyman. Why, why don't you, uh, Phil, why don't you tell us something about Brad Hyman? Why don't we, uh, what kind of, uh, what do you think of when you think of Brad Hyman? This is totally on the spot because, let's see. What do I think of when I think of Brad Hyman? Yo, before Hyman? I start, though, what's the signal if it starts to drag? The this? signal is, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. Uh, I think what I think of Brad is uh, he's a team player. I mean, he's a consummate team player, and uh, you know he's he's a, in an atmosphere where there's a lot of young guys that could be uh, taking up a lot of his time, and sometimes they do, and, and he digs right in and helps them out in every way he can. So that's what I think of Brad. What do you say, Brad? Well, when I think of uh, Brad, I think of uh, the year before we started the portfolio analytics group, and Brad was in Texas. Seminars. Brad was uh, on his last warning from Clayton Brown. All Brad needed was somebody to help him learn how to approach the person business differently, and he really took off. And then when we decided to start our own company, I remember that the uh, most valuable of the three in our mind was Brad Hyman. And it was the one that uh, Clayton Brown some reason was the least aggressive with maybe because they figured he was 
felt that Fred is, they knew where his loyalties were. Fred, was, Fred is, uh, is a guy that uh, I have, as, a, as an owner, had a tremendous amount of respect for. He's a guy that I would, if I were a, a salesperson, would look up to at any time. Uh, let's get the kind of question here. Yeah, yeah that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. They cheered for last time. Uh, I, these guys talked about Brad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Rachel. Rachel, would you please stand because you are gonna be the first recipient of the Betzel Bergen New Spouse Awards. Okay, and we're, there are gonna be more than one winner of the Spouse Awards. <laughs> and I would like to tell you that that this is, that we, I've talked to, to Brad about this a little bit. And you know, when when Rachel tells people the hours that Brad works, the typical response is that they would never put up with a spouse who works such <laughs> long hours. Most people use these comments as ammunition to try and spouse, uh, try and sway their spouses to work less. For Rachel, it's exactly the opposite. Brad tells me that he receives encouragement from her and thanks for working to provide for the family. And for Brad, he says she deserves, but doesn't always get the appreciation for bearing the entire responsibility of taking care of their little baby Grace, uh, paying the bills, doing the laundry, keeping our house, their house looking beautiful, making his lunch every day, holding a part-time job, and too many other things to mention in this letter. I want to tell you something about these two that many of you would never see. See, we worked in a little tiny office in, in Wheaton for a long time. We were so close that we could hear all the conversations. I want to introduce you to Pookie. And I want to tell you that Pookie has one of the best attitudes of any individual in our whole organization. And it's partly because this guy's so stinking romantic. He will call her up and go, hi, Pookie. How are you doing? And we all go, so, I mean, so that we feel all obligated. No, we feel like, we're like, uh, we're, we're scum of the earth. This guy is so good. But anyway, I've got, yes, that's right, that's right. You got a cigar in one hand, chew in the other. But I, we've got something for you, Pookie. I'm ready. Okay. And uh, let me see if I can find it here. Okay. You are the, the first recipient. Here it is. This certifies that Rachel Heitman is an official 1994 recipient of the Betzelberg and Newsbound Spouses Award for service, love, and patience above and beyond the call of duty. There's a little angel there in the middle. Betzelberg and Newsbound, this is for you. Thank you. And you're welcome. And this is. This is what we're. This is the Betzelberg and Newsbaum Dining and Dating Advisory Agreement. Let me let me read this to you because this is our gift to the spouse award recipients. Whereas it is understood that the wife of said BB&N employee and bearer of the certificate is in full control of when and where the money attached below shall be spent. That means Rachel, you get to decide. Whereas said husband does not deserve the company of so lovely a dining room. <laughs> and whereas children will not be allowed to interfere in this romantic evening, now therefore it is agreed as followed, husband and wife shall use the following $50 to enjoy an evening out for dinner, and the principals of Wetzelberg and Nussbaum do hereby solemnly swear to physically ban husband from his place of employment on said evening. <laughs> there you go. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move this way. I wanna come back to you in a little bit, buddy. Okay? We're gonna come back here. Let's move over this way. And we've got right now we've got Jason. Jason, Phil, you first. Tell me what's what what comes to mind when you think the Jason Rama. Uh, this is <laughs> uh, you know what comes to mind when I think of Jason is uh, Jason is somebody that uh, commands respect, I think. I remember when uh, Nick was talking with Chris and Nick was talking with Mark about coming to join our firm. And we didn't really spend a lot that much time with him talking to him or interviewing him, but uh, Nick's response was always, well, Jason really likes him. And uh, the implication was, hey, I got a lot of respect for Jason. If he feels they're good, then I know they're good. So that's what I think about it. The, the biggest memory that comes into mind is when we were in San Francisco and he was schmoozing all our customers, Nick. That's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> for, just, for, for just a little while, he was a competitor and we didn't like that feeling. Yeah, 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 he was doing a pretty good job. Yeah, he was, was doing a pretty good job. Yeah, so, yeah, he's doing okay. too good of a job there. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, I mean, really, Jason, uh, I knew Jason was, uh, 
was a talented person the first time that uh, I traveled with him, which was down to Puerto Rico about, what, about 18 months ago, two years ago. And uh, we worked for Clayton Brown together. And uh, over a pina colada, which is how I think clearly, we discussed uh, Jason's <laughs> life story. And uh, as a matter of fact, it was in that conversation that he told me about someone else that works for us. And, uh, and uh, I really have grown to appreciate Jason. Uh, he is, without a doubt, uh, one of the most gifted analytically people that we have working with us. And I think he's got a great future ahead of us. But I have to tell you about his wife, which I would like to stand up for. <laughs> please, uh, Lord, please stand up for us because this, this gal is incredible. I mean, he's chopped liver compared to her. Uh, you know, uh, Jason told me that he thinks that the most incredible thing about Lori is that she's probably the nicest and most tolerant wife in the world. And knowing Jason, I can see how that must be uh, one of the attributes that his wife must have. She doesn't complain too much about him working late hours or studying for class, because some of you may not know, but Jason is also studying for his MBA at the University of Chicago. She does uh, sometimes object to, the, to some of his ideas about men and women and the way, way things should be, because I've got to tell you, Jason is the Neanderthal from the 50s, and Lori is the woman of the 90s. In fact, uh, Lori, when she came into the office, told me a little while ago that she's, you know, she's actually a salesperson. She is, she wins the award for uh, spouse most likely to be hired as a future BB in salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> and then she basically, she was, she works in the temporary uh, field, and they told her you've got to get, you know, she was getting four new accounts per month, uh, or was it a week or per, as per right. month? And they all of a sudden said you've got to get ten. Well, the first month she got twelve. And the next month she got 11. She's just blowing them away. So we've got it's kind of a unique. I've never met two salespeople married together, but for your love and support of Jason, and we know that it's taken a lot of patience to do that. We would like to present you with the second Betzel Bergen Newsbaum. Let me find it here. We're going to find it here. We've got it. It's coming up. Here it is. The Spouses Award for Service, Love, and Patience Above and Beyond the Call of Duty. That goes to you. Thank you. And then, of course, we have also, in addition to that, please have a night out on us. <laughs> and uh, and the, whatever night it is, not only can he not work for us, he can't study for school. It's a done deal. Okay? Thank Let's give her a hand. Okay. Uh, so you're going to have to give the camera some. With Phil up here in the front of the room, I, I won't spend too much talking about too much time talking about Phil except to say, well, I will talk about Phil. You want to talk about Phil first? Because I have a lot of things to say about Phil, but you go ahead and start. I don't know. Phil, uh, Phil was with the Federal Reserve Bank and he interviewed at Clayton Brown and I told the people at Clayton Brown, you better give him an offer quick because there are plenty of people who would love to hire Phil. And they did. And I think LaSalle was one that wanted to hire Phil Newsman. And his first day on the job was on an airplane, which when it landed, he was required to speak in a seminar we had done in Virginia on regulatory issues. This is the first, literally the first day on the job. And, uh, and I remember when we uh, decided in, in starting our company, there were several critical uh, people that were, uh, in our minds, necessary. And one of those was he's, what's that? <laughs> I've said that another time. But um, Matt, Charlie, what do you call Phil? Goo. 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 That's yes, goo, and there's Roo right there. Goo. Goo and Roo, yes. But, um, and that's Mr. Travolta like over there. Read you some things. <laughs> Phil wrote some things here for us, and uh, and then I'd like to have Judy stand up. He said, in the future, when we look back on the good times we have had over the years, I can't imagine any year evoking more fond memories than this, our first year at Betzelberger News Fund. After all, who could forget going to work in shorts, and <laughs> pizza, yes. windows falling out, the, the silver streak, the toaster oven shorting out the blue <laughs> Doom, which is a computer game, willow tree ham and cheese omelets, which were close to Philly's heart, those late nights of fun, I mean work, and of course the sight of the company president lighting firecrackers under the chair. Oh, yes! Yes, I did that in one was that fun. Yes, I did a whole bunch of firecrackers under the And we that can't voice. forget the He's nose either. The, the joker here. But you know, uh, Judy, would you stand up now, please? There were a couple of other fond memories for Phil during the, the past year. He remembers the day he told Judy that he was unproductive at the office because he was spending too much time on busy work. 
The next day she came in, cleaned his desks, and organized his files. He remembered telling his wife that he missed having dinner with, his, with the kids on a regular basis, and so Judy made it a point to bring the kids and dinner to him, and they had, this, and they had several picnics on the card table in the old office in, in, uh, in Wheaton. He remembered running out of time preparing for a big presentation. Ten minutes after Judy called and asked how things were going, she and the three kids were in the office helping him sort out papers and staple things. She stayed till midnight punching holes in paper because we ran out of pre-punched paper. He remembered working late many a night, going home to a darkened house, crawling into bed only to hear his wife say, I hate those cigars. <laughs> <laughs> And he doesn't even smoke. It. <laughs> and, uh, and this is good. He said, I remember that last exciting yet stressful week at our old employer. Judy must have told me 20 times that whatever I decided was okay with her, and she never second guessed my decision. She said she would never second guess the decision, and she had it. During the first week of the firm's existence, Phil told me that one of the biggest positives the new company offered was the opportunity with, to work within a true team setting. Every team has stars, and every team has unsung heroes. Here's to one unsung hero. Thanks for being on my team, Phil says to Judy. Let's give her a hand. I'm clapping in my heart, Phil. I said it all. We are committed to families, but all of you can't go out to dinner on the same night. <laughs> Judy, you're an official recipient of the Best American News Fausta's Award. And? Did you get too much around here? I'm playing here. I'm not the one. Kelly Shelton. Next, we're going to get through a little bit here. Actually, what I'd like to do is I'm playing on the screen. Charlie? Hold on a second. You're not going to pass. I've got to see. Do I hit you by next? See those guys over there? Hold on. <laughs> hey Charlie, boy comes there. don't fall out of your chair. Okay, before I get to you, I'd like Jennifer to please stand up. All we need to say is that Jennifer is married to Charlie. <laughs> What patience and love this must require. You know, Charlie tells us that everybody in the neighborhood thinks that she might even be a single mom. And that could be because Charlie is one of the most uh, uh, one of the most energetic and giving people on the team. And he's somebody who is very protective of people, and people I know is protective of Jen too. But one of the things that he has said many times is that, you know, the the motive, primary motivation in his life and the things that he does is because he cares about family, and that's one of our primary things that we say in the mission statement. And we know that you are his motivation. So, having said that, <laughs> the whole thing just falls apart. Yes, the whole thing falls apart. Oh, so complicated. The service, love, and patience above and beyond the call of duty, the spouse's award, and Make sure he goes low fat. Chris told me to say that. There you go. Okay. You guys want to see this? Look at this. Okay. And now, before I go any further, let me see. Shane, would you stand up? Shane Moore, wife of Boyka. Oh, we're going to explain Boyka here in a few minutes. Boyka. Uh, Actually, it certainly is Mrs. Boyka. <laughs> Mrs. Boyka, yes. Shane, according to John, belovedly known as Boyka in the firm, is the reason that John found Betzelberg and Nussbaum. After they got married in July, they moved from California to Wheat. Uh, she teaches school and uh, coach soccer, as John said, to pay the bills while John was out there having a good time looking for a job. So obviously she was thrilled beyond belief when the boy got a clue and got a job. Uh, in any case, uh, as John says, he obviously married above himself. This is John's words. And uh, uh, it turns out that uh, we have a family relationship here between Shane and, and Phil. But, it, but regardless of what 
John wrote here, it was because we were very impressed with your husband. We hired him. He is a very talented young man, and we're very excited to have him working with us. Uh, John said, Shane is definitely patient. The week of Itasca training camp, John and Shane only saw each other for three hours the whole week. And that is that. more than my wife. You know, each other. this is an unusual first year, folks. And Rich is going to talk, I know Rich is going to talk about this more. But I know that John has really put up with a lot of it, and I know Shane has done a lot of that too. And so it is absolutely fitting that you should get one of these things, if I can find one in here, which is an official 1994. Okay, I've got it here. Here, have dinner with the boy. He'll, he'll give you a great time there. And let's see, I've got it in here. It's in here. Did I, anybody see it on the floor? Did I drop it back there anywhere? Did I drop it down there anywhere? No, no, it's right here, it's right here. I think it's right here. Jimmy the official recipient of oh, <laughs> service, love, and patience, above and beyond call of duty, the spouse's award. Thank you. Let's give it a big one. Now, we have a couple of uh, single gringos in the back row. Oh, yeah. There's cash. Yeah. The single gringo, look at them. Don't you feel sorry for them? They're homely. They're uh, unmarried. I mean, you know, the rest of us, the rest of us, we had to go out. The rest of us, we had to go out selling ourselves. These guys go shopping. My heart bleeds. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as our gift to you, boys, we know that you're big on dieting. So what we do is, well, the big thing of butter cookies. And here you go, guys. All kidding aside, no. <laughs> where's the cat? All kidding aside, you know, I mentioned Jason in my talk with him, and, and as he talked to me about his life experiences and what you know he had done, these are two guys he went to school with, and uh, you know, I've just never worked with a better group of people than the people that are in this room, and uh, it's really, you know, I, I start to feel old when I say this, but it's hard to find younger guys that really have their heads on screwed on straight. And these guys do, as Jason does. And I'm very excited to work with them. Do you have anything to say about these guys, uh, Rich? Oh, you want some like help getting a date or something? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm sending them back to they said, how, you know. We, we, oh, they can't meet a woman there. They ain't gonna be one anyway. Yeah. 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 We married real quick. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Can we just do a group right now? Now, a huge risk because, you know, they might say no. Since we don't give gift certificates when you own the company and you're going to your wife, you, you get down on your knees and you say, Will you, Will you go on, on a date with me? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your car Cheryl, and I'll just read it with our little uh, color printer that uh, one of your husbands Is that using my color printer? Somebody else took it took a longer time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it took you a longer time. Yeah. Okay, I'll just read what it says here. In appreciation for your valuable contribution to the success of our team and for putting up with our team captains, we would like to give you what you probably have not had for the last nine months, a night out with your husband. This certificate is good for one dinner for two at Maggiano's and Oakbrook. No, it's kind of a counterfeit, though. So it's that comes later. <laughs> Babysitting will be provided by the team members of PBN wow. if, wow. you trust <laughs> if you trust them. <laughs> Thanks again to PBN boys. Thank you. Hey. Hey. You're enjoying me in the front. Oh, I didn't know this was funny. I didn't know this was funny. All right, all right. <coughs> all right, okay. Scary. Now. You don't know what they're going to say about him. It's just a little bit. Charlie, you look drunk as usual. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. Two shots you should know better to ask me. <laughs> 
Uh, one of the things that we've tried to we tried to really hammer home is that we are. <laughs> one of the things that we really try to hammer home is the idea of service and learning. And another thing that I know Rich and I believe in to the core of our being is that unlike most corporate structures where you've got a pyramid with the top people on the top and then you've got a big bottom here with all the little people at the bottom, we are exactly the opposite, which is why I didn't tell Rich about this because he'd be upset with me that I was going to give him something. Did you spend our money? Yes. No, <laughs> it's my money. No, now he's not upset. It's my money. Oh, okay. yeah, that's fine, yeah, that's fine with me. No, no seriously. Uh, over this last year, there have been two individuals uh, that have done the work that nobody else <coughs> is willing to do to move the team forward. And uh, Charlie used to call himself uh, the chief grunt, which I thought was a, was a terminology that only Charlie could say because the rest of us just respected him too much to have ever thought that, let alone to say that. And sure enough, in his footsteps, coming behind him is John Moore, who has done a fantastic job, and who, if anything, I think has been uh, the person that has enabled us to take the next step, especially as we've moved into our new offices in Itasca. So these are the two heroes, and I brought up another person here because I don't know of anybody else, and I'm gonna go take you back now before this company. Some of you that were at Clayton Brown, do you remember that before we left, well, we, for about the, the two or three months before we left, this guy had no incentive to help you and to help some other people that were there that we knew were not coming with us. But that's just Rich Burke. He was going to help everybody he could before we left. And he was, on the, phone, he was on the phone with a customer of mine two days before you guys left when he knew that you guys were gone. When he knew that he had no hope. As he as, as I've ever seen. As him. ever. And when it comes, when some of you guys need, <laughs> when, you, when some of you guys need help, you know, you might think, gee, well, it's because he owns the company that he's helping me in doing that out. But I know that that's not true because I know that these guys at the top of the pyramid, and me down here at the bottom with him, he's the guy that I really admire here at the bottom. And so I felt like this would be a rare occasion. This is a strange year. This is a year when we shouldn't have broken even over this time period. We should be down a whole lot in our capital. And it's only because of people like these three guys that we are where we are. And so I don't know if we're going to call this in the future the service award or what we're going to call it. But the grunt award. This, the grunt award, or, or maybe that's a good name for the president's award or something <laughs> like that. But uh, uh, John, Rich, Thank you very much. and Charlie, and good job, guys. Which is Rich Burke, who's going to get up here and tell us what's going to happen next year. Uh, Please tell me. I, I like only know. Boy, I tell you, if you would have told me one year ago at this time <laughs> that I'd be standing in front of uh, 10 people, of which four overlap and the other six did not, and that I would have a company with the name of Betzel, Berg, and Nussbaum when I worked for 13 years for a company called Clayton Brown and Associates, even though I named myself Clayton, and that we would start a company in March, actually we resigned in March of 1994. Right after we resigned, the bond market died. Now those of you who aren't familiar with that, what the bond market did in the last six months, if it was the stock market, would have been almost record setting. It is incredible. It would be like the Dow Jones declining over 1,000 points. And if you would have said that we're going to leave a company where I was making very comfortable living, minding my own business, and start a new company, and the bond market would die, and that I would have... Uh, <clears throat> other stresses along the way, like, you know, people who said, yeah, we're coming with you, and then when we decide to leave, are, are being bribed away, and, uh, and incredible, incredible. I mean, it's like, when Nick and I started the, uh, started the company, I'm going to blame it on him. <laughs> I would have never done it without Nick. <clears throat> and uh, and we, we talked about it, and then we resign, and uh, we're out, we go to Washington. It's a real weird feeling. 
because there's no owner's manual. And those of you who are new parents, there's a little bit of an owner's manual, but there's no owner's manual, what we're doing. And not only that, but we're trying to do something completely different than the typical way Wall Street does the business. Let me just give you a couple of, of little backgrounds of what we're trying to do. One of the things is we want salespeople who can make informed recommendations. And uh, in my experience, when I was at Clayton Brown and we started the Portfolio Analytics Group, it was amazing to me that there were some people in the sales force who had been uh, with the company over 15 years, could not solve some basic bond math questions. It was a real eye -opener. And so that's you know, one of the things that we want. One of the other things we want is something uh, that a lot of firms cannot do is we will take a stand. And that goes along with Nick and the, and the Chris message. We will take a stand on securities. And it will be an unpopular stand for some people because it won't always be the most popular in vogue uh, thing to do. But that's something that we're all about and that's the reputation we're building. Um, the idea of teamwork. Um, there is not a salesperson here who I want to be an independent contractor. I want to be a teammate. I want to give eventually all my accounts and all the accounts to the people who are going to be making the calls and it's a joint effort. And that's something that's different than most firms. And that's where we're headed. If you would have said back in last year at this time that the bond market would collapse and that um, you, you would have the incredible fear going on in the marketplace and that we would start a company in March and we would be around in November and December, I would have doubted it. And I'm proud of these guys, because we're, 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 we're not only around, we're here to stay. And now as we look back, which is one of our things we do in the sales uh, force, and kind of review the, the, the things that have gone through and the stresses and, and hiring people, and I haven't let my first guy go. That was an incredible stress. You know, if we just start to come back, I let somebody go. And that was a you know, learning experience and unbelievable amounts of growth. And my wife, who, who was kind of getting used to me being around uh, a lot, then all of a sudden last year we pulled a rug under it. I'm gone a lot. And she's been terrific. And Cheryl and Judy. But um, as we look forward, and I told this to Carrie, and I, and I say this sincerely, what is our immediate goal? And how have we done with it? Our immediate goal is to build it. See, you gotta build reputation first. You take a stand, and then you follow up. And we are on that track. We have taken a stand, we are building a reputation, and it is a very front-end loaded sales uh, process, where we don't just come in and immediately try to you know, make somebody uh, an instant customer, but it's something that we want to build through a different process. And we're doing that. And I think next year, it'll be exciting. I can't wait to see what we'll bring next year. I was hoping Kurt would have our, our month end numbers for November, and he didn't have them for me. So I don't know where we are. Like he's Sorry. Busy, you know? but, we'll get, we'll get them. <clears throat> but I can say that I, I, I am very proud to be associated with every one of these guys and you. Uh, it's kind of funny that Paul Guy's in for right now, except for Carl, and she hasn't been invited back, so maybe there's something going on right now. Um, but they're, they're wonderful guys to work with. Uh, I'm excited to invest, invest my life with them. And we have one more announcement. No. What we want to do is we're going to bring up all the founders. Right founders. Now. Founders and chief financial yeah. officer. And uh, Kurt, we've talked about here a little bit. We talked about Phil. Phil's our executive vice president and principal. Rich is chairman and CEO. I'm president. And Brad doesn't have a title until tonight. Because up till now, we've never had a sales vice president. And we said that we would not do what every firm that we've ever worked for has ever done, which is throw out vice presidents just because a guy sells a lot of bonds. We said that in order to be worthy of the title vice president in this firm, it's going to mean something very deep and important. It's going to mean that not only do you know your stuff, 
but that you can communicate your stuff. And in the past, we said that means you've got to be able to do a board presentation. And unwittingly, the day before yesterday, Brad gave what we call a look back on the phone to one of our customers. And he did such a great job at it. And we have so much confidence in him that we've decided that tonight will be the first time that we have ever designated somebody a sales vice president. So I would like to introduce to you our first vice president of sales, Brad Hyde. Okay, let's see it. <laughs> May God, in his wisdom and infinite love, look down upon you. May God, in his wisdom and infinite love, look down upon you from heaven above. May he grant you good fortune, contentment, and peace. And may all your fortunes forever increase. Here, here. Make sure you fill up there. Would you like a bar album? I'd love like to. We work. Oh, <laughs> you're a trip. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, you're way too much. Thank you. Go back to our table. We'll work dessert. Thank you. Are you going to eat dessert? Oh, I declare that. Yeah. We got it. I heard that. Do you like lights? 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 Do you like lights?